Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. Today we have a mystery project, and this is coming to us from Dave at Table Ready Gaming. This is a collaboration. I sent him a mini, he sent me what I believe to be a mini, and we are gonna paint him up and make some cool videos. So, let's see what we're working with here. Instructions. Okay. Ooh. Swag. Okay, false start. Dave from Table Ready Gaming sent me some Table Ready Gaming swag. But now we're gonna get to the actual challenge. We've got a smaller box here. Sounds like there might be some, uh, some hobby goodies in there. Let's get to it. So I have finally gotten to the meat of the package here. We have some instructions, which I'm going to read on camera in just a second. We have something to paint with, good luck, and something to paint. So we're going to do instructions first, maybe build the suspense a little bit. Okay. Brent, here's something a little different for you. It's a miniature from a game company based in my hometown. If you're interested in a small model count fantasy skirmish game, I encourage you to check out Free Blades by DGS Games. To describe the game in a nutshell, it's basically a modern version of Mordheim. Great. I also thought I'd include a new medium for you to try. You may or may not have used this already in the mini painting hobby. If not, it takes a moment to get the hang of, but in the end, you can get some cool effects. I'm excited to see what you do with this package. Okay, so we've got something from a new game, and we have a medium to use it with. So let's see what this mini is. Okay, so this is from Freeblades, and we have Trazerite, uh, Daclos Ravager. Okay, what is this? Whew. This is a beastie. All right, we got kind of a, a dragon-inspired creature, and it looks like we have a mount. So the dragon is a mount, he's got a saddlebag and everything, and we have a rider. Okay, very cool. I have never seen this before, so I am excited. I've heard of the game, though, it looks cool. Okay. Now let's see what this new medium is for me to try out. Woo! Vallejo Liquid Silver. Okay, I've heard about this stuff. I have not used it yet. So this is an awesome package. Thank you, Dave. Let's get to it. So let's see what we have here. A blister pack with a mini and a base. The dragon has a resin body and wings, and metal feet. The rider is metal, and the base is plastic. Taking a look at the mini, the resin cast wasn't perfect, but it's nothing that I can't fix up with the file. I got everything assembled pretty easily, and ready for some priming. I decided to work on the base separately from the dragon, and separately from the rider. I used a few drops of super glue to put the rider and the dragon each onto a temporary base to make it easier to use my painting handles. I don't know the world that Freeblades is set in, so I'm not sure if this is actually a dragon, but I'm going to call it a dragon. I made a conscious decision not to look up this character until after I had painted the model. From the packaging and the sculpt, it's actually unclear if this is a hero or a villain, so I'm going to start painting and not let a little thing like game lore affect my choices. For the base, I'm going for a rocky outcrop. I started with a layer of Vallejo Dark Earth Texture, which makes a nice mortar. Then I pulled out one of my jars of rocks. These are shards of phyllite that I found on the beach. Always bring Tupperware with you to the beach. 
I really like the jagged texture of this rock because it has a dangerous feel to it and it picks up dry brushing very nicely. I built up a little rock pile for the dragon to perch on, then I poured some extra thin super glue on top to really lock everything in place. For priming, I hit everything with black Vallejo surface primer through my airbrush. I've got three different ideas for painting the dragon, the rider, and the base, but a black prime will work for each of them. For the dragon, I'm going to get a base coat on with acrylic artist inks. The first step is to do a zenithal highlight with white. Liquitex Titanium White Ink shoots very nicely through my airbrush straight out of the bottle. I'm going to do a couple of things here. First, I'm doing a standard zenithal highlight to light up the dragon from above, leaving dark shadows underneath. I didn't completely ignore the underside though. Animals often have a lighter belly, so I'm coming in to light up his belly a bit. A video from Vince Venturella really helped me to think about this. The position of the sun often illuminates the back of an animal, but the belly is often lighter in color, so where does the white ink go? Both. Both is a perfectly acceptable answer. I'm also lighting up the underside of the wing webbing. This can represent a partially translucent wing that has some sunlight poking through. I've never painted a dragon before, so this is exciting. They can come in any color, so there's a lot of choice here. I was deciding between blue and green, but I ended up going with green. I started with a few coats of this olive green ink. I figured I'd start with a pretty drab color of green and work up from there. After the green was on, I started in on some highlights by hitting the wings with yellow ink. I aimed for the center of the webbing to try to give it the feeling of translucency. The next step is going to be a wash, so I hit the dragon with a light coat of gloss varnish to protect the colors and to let the upcoming wash slide freely over the surface. For the wash, I used Military Shader from Army Painter. This is a dark brownish green that lines up nicely with the olive green base coat. There's some good texture on the head, the muscles, and the wings that take the wash nicely. Time to get started on that rider. He's wearing what looks like plate mail, so that's where I'm going to use this Vallejo Liquid Silver. Covering him head to toe in this paint ought to satisfy the requirements of this mini painting challenge. This paint had a childproof lid and it smells like a hospital. Lots of isopropanol in here. It's liquidy and it looks really cool. This is definitely different from the metallic paints that I normally work with, so I tried it out on a few of my trusty, junky Dark Eldar test models. My goal here is just to see if this paint is runny, or chunky, or leaves brush strokes, or dries way too fast, anything like that. I'm just getting a feel for it so I don't immediately have a problem with my nice Daclos Ravager. It turns out this stuff is awesome. I tried just slopping it on in a way that would certainly leave a mess with other metallic paints, and instead I got a bright, smooth coat with excellent coverage. I literally tried to leave brush strokes, and I couldn't do it. Look at the blade horns on this Dark Eldar. I have painted dozens of this exact helmet, and this smooth metallic surface has never looked this nice. So far, the only drawback to this paint is that you should probably use a cheap synthetic brush and have some isopropyl alcohol on hand to clean it. Not a problem. Okay, on to the actual rider that we care about. So yeah, this challenge box came to us from Dave Snodgrass. He's a painter and an RPG player. He's got a big Instagram account and a smaller, newer YouTube channel. So far, I'm very excited by what he sent. In some of my videos, I've complained about metallic paints, and this little bottle is a game changer. I'm tempted to go buy the rest of the set. By the way, if anyone knows a good distributor for the extended range of Vallejo products in the US, drop it in the comments. I really like a lot of the products from this company, but it seems that eBay or third-party retailers on Amazon is the best way to get some of their stuff. One more thing, it's recently come to my attention that this company is probably pronounced Vallejo. I took six years of Spanish class, I probably should have seen this. But we've come too far now. With the rider all covered in silver, I pulled out my favorite wash for plate mail. Armor wash from Secret Weapon. This is a gray-brown that looks awesome on medieval armor. But, for some reason, it wasn't behaving great today. 
I'll figure this out a bit later in the painting process, but it turns out that the binder in this silver is a bit more hydrophobic than I'm used to, so the wash didn't behave right. Next time, I'll hit the mini with a clear coat of standard acrylic varnish after the liquid silver and before the wash, and that should do the trick. I started painting his saddle brown, and that is when I figured out how hydrophobic this silver really is. I switched to a brown brush-on primer, and luckily that worked just fine. I hit all the parts that I wanted to be brown, and I also threw a coat of this primer on the parts that I wanted to be other colors as well. Again, in retrospect, a clear coat of varnish over this silver might have been a better approach. While I had the brown surface primer out, I started painting the saddle on the dragon as well. I kept working on the dragon. To incorporate a complementary color, I took red ink and dabbed it into the holes on the wings. It looks like these might be battle damage, holes left by arrows maybe. In my mind, they're healing up, but they're still raw, so let's give them a reddish tinge. To keep going with that raw red color, I also dabbed some in around the bone battens of the wings. These fleshy bits can be red and raw also, plus the green and the red look great together, so it's a good excuse to work in some more red. When I assembled the model, I didn't get either of the shoulder joints perfectly aligned, and now that there's some paint on the model, my error is more obvious. To even that out better, I put a few layers of matte varnish over the trouble area. This will smooth over the sharp angles from the imperfect joint. When a couple of layers have dried, I'll throw on some highlights to the shoulder muscles and the joint should be much harder to see. I think that I got this trick of using matte varnish to fix gaps and seams on an in-progress mini from Vince Venturella as well. Thanks Vince. It can take several layers of varnish to fill in a small gap, but it's a great trick for models that are already partway painted. Next, I took some more yellow ink and brushed it onto the wings and the chest and belly. Again, I'm trying to get the wings to look translucent, and I'm trying to give the belly a slightly different tone than the rest of the torso. I ended up doing a couple layers of this yellow. It's so translucent that the effect of each layer is quite subtle. That gives us a lot of control, but it also takes longer. While the dragon was drying, I kept working on the rider. I decided to make the cloth visible under his plate a nice purple color. The super shiny steel gives the impression of a noble knight, and I think the purple goes nicely with that theme. Additionally, reddish purple is a great complement for the greenish yellow dragon, so I'm hoping that the color scheme will jive when I get the mount and rider assembled. Since washing the armor didn't work that well, I decided to try black lining each plate. An overarching concern that I had for the rider is that he was too silver. I needed something to give the figure definition so that he isn't just a shiny stick figure sitting on top of his dragon. I used a thick and messy black lining to try to liven him up a bit. I was able to get the black paint to stick in the recesses, so that's a good start. A fallback option to work some more color onto the rider is to simply decide that he painted some of his armor plates. Maybe painting a pair of his shoulder plates could add some nice variety. What I ended up deciding is that the most decorative segment of his helmet would be gold, along with some of the rivets on his armor. I prepped for using a standard gold acrylic paint by priming with brown. Then I pulled out polished gold from Vallejo Game Color. Once the gold was on, I took the liquid silver back out to learn whether or not it could be used to fix mistakes. Luckily it could. I actually had pretty good control with it. I was able to tidy up the spots where some of the other colors had gotten out of hand, particularly that messy black lining and a few splotches from the armor wash. Time to make some choices on other smaller details. The bedroll gets to be gray. More importantly, I decided on a dark gray, nearly black for the wing bones. I was deciding between a beige bone color, a dark green, or a blackish color. I think the black bones makes the dragon look a little more primal and vicious. The rider is a noble knight, but his mount is a fearsome beast. I kept working on the smaller and smaller details wherever I saw them. Now that the main colors are pretty much done, it's time to start bringing the base, the dragon, and the knight all together. 
I snipped a bit of the dragon's resin base off, and then I used that Vallejo earth texture and rock shards to blend the dragon's rocky perch into the base. Vallejo, Vallejo. I don't know, that correct pronunciation is growing on me. Anyway, I hit the base with a bit of thin super glue and accelerator to lock those rocks together for all time. I glued the rider to his saddle without incident. As I hoped, that red-purple on the knight looks pretty cool with the yellow-green on the dragon. I'm pleased with this. Time to dry brush the base. I'm going for a barren, dangerous land, so I'm using some cold grays for the dry brush. A medium gray and a very light gray. Less is more here. I want to pick out the sharp edges of the rock while leaving a bunch of that black base coat visible. These rock shards with this simple black and gray color scheme is one of my favorite base themes. It's easy, it looks good with almost any mini, and the gray tone really lets the colors on the model shine. Once the base is done, it helps me to see what on the model still needs work. I think this model is going to come together nicely. When I was starting on this model, I made the choice of a green dragon and a silver knight and kind of just started painting, hoping for the best, searching for tidbits of inspiration as I went. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. Well, now that the colors are locked in, I felt comfortable looking up the Freeblades game. I'd heard of this before, but I never spent any time reading up on it. It turns out Trazerite, Daklos Ravager, is not a character name. Trazerite is a faction name, and this warrior happens to be a Daklos Ravager. Freeblades also has a Ravager model on foot who has the same spear and net as this rider, he just doesn't have that Daklos. So the Trazerite faction is kind of Rome plus dinosaurs, which is awesome. Citizen soldiers from a giant prosperous empire with dinosaurs. The empire does some things that aren't super cool, but I think that they see themselves as the good guys. Also, one of their main colors is purple, so it turns out that I painted this Ravager up in a pretty reasonable way. The box art for the model does have him wearing brown leather armor, but I'm happy with my choice of bright silver plate. Really, that plate mail was Dave's choice anyway, and I don't bear that much responsibility for it. I'm having a lot of fun with this project, and I've gotta thank Dave for collaborating with me on this video. He picked out an awesome mini. A knight riding a dragon is normally a pretty good bet, but I'm also really pleased that Dave introduced me to this Freeblades game from DGS. There are a lot of smaller mini companies out there that can get a bit lost in the shadow of Games Workshop. These smaller companies can have some of the coolest minis though. Scrolling around on the Freeblades site, dgsgames.com, I see dozens of unique character minis that I'd love to paint someday. I have no idea if the game is fun or not, but the minis certainly are cool. I especially see a lot of really good options for RPG characters. If you're still searching for a nice player character model and you haven't checked out Freeblades yet, take a look. I'll toss a link up to DGS Freeblades Instagram too. Whoever paints their minis is better than me, and I really enjoyed flipping through it. Alright, back to painting. I put two levels of bright green highlights onto the dragon. For the first highlight, I picked out a lot of the muscles and details on the face, particularly on the sunny side, but I didn't entirely neglect the shadowed bits of the dragon either. I thought this was important since so much of the dragon's body isn't in direct sunlight, but would still look better with a bit of highlighting. For the brighter second highlight, I stuck to the ridges on his head and the muscles on his shoulders that were getting hit with direct sunlight. This highlighting step really helps liven up the dragon and makes me feel a lot better about how this model is coming along. I decided things were looking pretty good, so I hooked up my airbrush and put down a layer of matte varnish. You might have noticed that this whole model was looking a bit shiny during the video. The acrylic inks that I used have a bit of a glossy finish, and I also used a gloss varnish early in the process. If this had caused serious problems with the painting, I would have done a matte varnish much earlier. Anyway, with the sheen tamped down a bit, I took some glamour shots. This is a larger model than I normally photograph, and the wings are capable of casting some serious shadows, so I was really curious to see how this would appear on the computer screen. The photos actually turned out pretty well. As so often happens though, when I blew this up to 4K on a big computer screen, 
I was able to see a lot of mistakes. You can either see this as a bit annoying, or as an excellent tool to get better at painting. Honestly, it's a bit of both. Anyway, I took the model back to my painting desk, and I did my best to clean up those flaws. Then, I took some more pictures. Here we are. I'm quite happy with the model now. I'm always a bit nervous about painting a model that doesn't have eyes. In this case, the knight only has a visor slit. Even the dragon has tiny, tiny, beady little eyes, and it's just a little bit harder to bring these models to life. In the end, I think black lining on the knight's armor and the aggressive highlighting on the dragon's head help to liven up both of these figures. I'm also quite pleased with how the color balance turned out. So, all in all, I think this turned out pretty nicely. Like I said, that Vallejo liquid silver is awesome. A metallic paint with great coverage that can be brushed on without leaving brush strokes. Excellent. Thanks to Dave for introducing me, and perhaps you, to this cool product. So this video was part of a collaboration. Dave sent me a mini painting challenge, and I sent him a mini painting challenge. Now that you've watched this video, you should head on over and check out Dave's channel. You can thank him for sending us this awesome mini, and you can check out what I sent to him. I chose what I hope will be a really spicy project that will give him an opportunity to show off what his channel is all about. Dave is a really personable and creative guy. He comes with the hobby and kind of the same way I do, always ready to experiment and find new techniques that work for him. His channel is quite new, but he has so many ideas, so much passion, and so much ambition that I think his channel might take off. Dave is fun to watch in a gooberish sort of way, so go check him out. As I record this, he has 80 subscribers, and I think he deserves more. Head on over there and give him some feedback and some encouragement. Alright. That does it for this time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing, or commenting. All that stuff really does help the channel. Even better, tell a friend about Goobertown Hobbies. Maybe they'll like it too. Also, remember to check out Dave Snodgrass at Table Ready Gaming and Freeblades at DGS Games. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching.